This is KGW News at 5. Well, traffic is flowing again on southbound I-405. This is a live look at the Fremont Bridge after a protest forced a closure at Everett Street. This is the scene about 430 this afternoon. Video sent to us shows Palestinian flags on cars and free Palestine on some windows. The protest went on for about an hour and a half, causing a miles long backup. Portland police says they were monitoring the situation. And thanks for joining us tonight. I'm John Adams. Measles cases are up across the country now touching 17 states. That includes an outbreak in southwest Washington earlier this year. So what do parents need to know? Our Sydney Dorner joins us with advice from a local pediatrician. Sydney. John, there have been 45 cases of the measles across the U.S. as of Thursday. According to the CDC, that's still considered low. But health officials still say it's important to be vigilant. Local pediatrician Heather Long says measles can start out like any other respiratory virus with a fever, cough, and congestion. She says what sets measles apart are the white spots that commonly appear in the mouth after infection. It's mainly concerning just because of how infectious it is if you haven't been vaccinated against it. 45 measles cases have been reported in 17 states across the U.S. as of this week. Health leaders say this is alarming, considering the country saw 58 cases in total last year. Eight of the cases this year were reported in Clark and Waukicum counties in Washington state in January. Dr. Heather Long, a pediatrician at Clackamas and Oregon Pediatrics, says measles cases in the United States are still relatively rare, but... They've shown um, when vaccine rates drop below 95% of the population, that's when clusters of cases tend to pop up. Measles has distinct symptoms that usually appear within the first few days of infection. Spots can show up in the mouth. They're white, usually. Um, and then a rash on the outside of the skin will start usually around that same time. Um, the rash starts on the head and the face and spreads down the body and is usually redder um, and more noticeable than other viral rashes. If you see any of these symptoms, Dr. Long recommends contacting your medical provider for a screening. About one in five children with measles will end up getting hospitalized. Dr. Long says the vaccination against measles is largely effective. If your child has been vaccinated, concern for measles, even with rising cases in the U.S., um, you know, something to keep in the back of your mind, but not something to be too worried about. Now, if your child is not vaccinated against measles, Dr. Long says there is a 90% chance of infection if they come in contact with someone with measles. She says measles droplets from a cough or sneeze can stay in an enclosed space for up to two hours. John, back to you. All right, Sydney, thank you. Well, the suspect in Thursday's deadly shooting in Salem is now in jail. The police department says 16-year-old Nathaniel McCray Jr. turned himself in last night. He was booked into the juvenile detention center on second degree murder and attempted murder charges, amongst other charges. 16 year old Jose Vasquez Valenzuela was shot after shots were fired between two groups of people at Bush's Pasture Park. Two other teens were also hit. They are still in the hospital. Well, the family of a man shot by Portland police back in 2022 takes the city to court. This comes after a grand jury found the officer's use of force not criminal. The family says 30 year old Manny Clark had no connection to an attempted armed robbery and didn't fit the description of suspects. Despite this, the lawsuit says officers went after Clark's car. So you can imagine uh, just stopping to have a cigarette, wondering how the rest of your night might go and suddenly bright lights turn on all around you. Um, you're scared, you don't know what's going on, and uh, you start running. Well, the director of the Civil Rights Project says Clark was unarmed when PPB officers shot him in the back. The lawsuit also claims even though there was an ambulance nearby, paramedics weren't allowed to help for nearly half an hour. Clark died days later at the hospital. We reached out to both the police bureau and the city of Portland. A PPB spokesperson told us they don't comment on pending litigation. We're still waiting to hear back from the city. Well, investigators are trying to find out what started a fire at an auto shop this morning. Crews were called to Bob's Auto Sales at Southeast 82nd Avenue around 815. They saw flames coming out of the building. It took them about 15 minutes to put out the fire. No one was hurt. 
and a driver was hurt but survived after their car fell about 100 feet and caught fire. Portland police say the driver was taking the ramp from southbound I-5 to the Water Avenue exit when he lost control of the vehicle. The car bro uh, broke a light pole and went over the side, falling onto Water Avenue at Yamhill. Police believe the driver was speeding and under the influence of alcohol. He was cited at the hospital. Law enforcement in Multnomah County conducted a public safety mission on Friday. It ended up with 10 people arrested and more than $2,000 in stolen merchandise recovered. Officers were in Fairview, Troutdale and Wood Village focusing on retail theft and traffic safety. They also confiscated a handgun. The Multnomah County Sheriff's Office says you should expect to see more public safety missions take place throughout the year. Well, we saw about four seasons worth of weather in the Portland area today. Joe Ranieri joining us now. And Joe, how are things looking for folks getting out and about on the town tonight? Well, we're going to gradually see uh, some things kind of grow in intensity over the next several hours, pretty much throughout the overnight hours, though, John. The one thing we didn't see in the valley was the snow, but we almost got all four seasons, like you said. We're looking at a temperature of 50 degrees. I have the uh, coast cam up because this is an area that's going to be seeing some active weather overnight and into tomorrow with some some showers and the big story is going to be the wind. This is that upper level low. It's going to be moving on shore here tonight and into tomorrow, bringing gusts up to anywhere from 40 to 45 miles an hour. Now a high wind warning is in effect until early tomorrow morning. That's that red color up and down the Oregon coastline. Uh, you can kind of see that white color is a winter weather advisory throughout the Oregon Cascades uh, at 4,000 feet and higher. This advisory throughout the mountains will be in place until early Monday morning. So as we go hour by hour, we'll start to see those showers really start to increase along the coast right around 9 30 10 o'clock tonight bringing in some heavy uh, wind and intense you can kind of see that southerly flow again i'm forecasting gusts anywhere from 40 to 45 miles an hour overnight and the oregon cascades are going to be seeing nothing but snow tonight and into tomorrow with the snow level down to 3,000 feet but coming up in my detailed forecast i'll break down your hour by hour forecast for tomorrow and talk about the chances of really seeing some spring weather move in by the later part of next week all right joe thank you we'll look forward to that well, what was a short legislative session in Salem became even shorter after Oregon lawmakers ended it three days early. Some of the bills that passed over the last few weeks are now waiting for a signature from Governor Kotek, including the governor's own housing bill, although lawmakers did cut her original ask of $500 million down to $376 million. There's also the bipartisan campaign finance bill which caps donations for political campaigns. That one doesn't kick in until 2027. And House Bill 4002 rolls back parts of Oregon Measure 110 and recriminalizes drug possession in the state. Now, three of the bills that died during this session include one that would have kept Oregon on standard time for the entire year and another that would have banned book bans in schools. That one died on the last day of the session. A bill to bar teachers from going on strike also failed. We have more on the end of the short legislative session online on our website, KGW.com. Well, a traffic alert for drivers in Sherwood. The eastbound lanes of Southwest Sunset Boulevard are closed near Heather Heatherwood. You can see a large tree fell onto the road. The road will stay closed until crews can remove it. Daddy daughter bracelets for girl power day. Well, a unique event took place in Milwaukee today in celebration of International Women's Month. Creators and Curators Market held their fourth annual Girl Power Market. This year came with a twist. Young entrepreneurs joined other makers and creators to sell their own handcrafted goods. Some of them even as young as six years old. I really like making things and um, usually I just, if I see a bead that I like, I try and incorporate it into um, any jewelry that I'm making or something 3D on a piece of paper. Well, creators and Curators Market says this allows kids to learn about their careers, empowers them, and inspires some future leaders.